Hello everybody, surprising new leaks are out now for the Nintendo Switch 2, which everyone has been looking forward to. Well, I, I kind of have because I haven't liked the fact the Switch is being so slow, you know, compared to everything else. But it is a handheld, so it is a thing. According to Bloomberg, which tends to get things right sometimes, you know, it's their leaks, their rumors, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. But here we are. According to Bloomberg, Nintendo Co. will be launching in the new game console, which is Nintendo Switch 2 as far as we know. Uh, with an 8-inch LCD screen. 8-inch is great, because it's a lot bigger. It, it gives you more real estate to see things. LCD, they're going back in it in time, in technology. LCD tends to have bad viewing angles and bad fidelity. I mean, 1080p, it's fine. If they can finally get a lot of their games in 1080p, it's going to be fine. It's not going to be a big issue. But we have the Switch OLED, which came out. And why are they going back to LCD? It could very well be a cost-cutting uh, issue. It really could. This is Omnia analyst Hiroshi, Hiroshi Hayase is saying that uh, the new device from the Kyoto-based games maker will be responsible for a doubling in shipments of so-called amusement displays in 2024. Uh, it was said on Friday. His research focuses on small and medium displays, and he bases annual forecasts on checks with companies in supply chain. So, Nintendo's seven-year-old Switch. Yes, the Switch is seven years old. But it has sold 132 million copies because there was no comp competition in the general price bracket of it. Now we have the Steam Deck and all of those uh, copies of it. You know, the, the uh, Zephyrus and all those other copies that are popping up. Pal Kitties and all these other things. They, they've kind of been eating into the market share a little bit. Not a lot because Nintendo really... People, when you talk about Nintendo, they really get into that. So, But it is approaching its end of its life cycle. I would say the end of the life cycle was maybe three, four, three years ago. Two, three years ago, around four or five, because it, the Tegra chip that it uses was already pretty old when it was put in there. It was just the best thing that they could do for the mobile, for that type of market without being like a mobile, like, uh, without being a mobile phone processor. The Tegra was the best thing that they could use that was going to be saving them on power and have enough to actually have gaming on it. Now, of course, the company <clears throat> has been very tight lipped about any potential successor because they want to be able to have the hype. They want to be able to have like, you know, the Nintendo Direct where everyone's looking, everyone's like, wow, wow, wow. And then eventually it comes out and people are going to be freaking pre-ordering it and scalpers are going to be getting as much as they can from it. Oh, God, we're going to have to worry about scalpers big time with this one. Absolutely. But I'm guessing it's just a cost cutting thing with the LCD screens and it really annoys me. It really does. But what can we do? Osaka based Sharp Corp last year said it was supplying LCD panels and working closely with the maker of an upcoming console that was then at the R&D stage. Sharp, which is owned by Foxconn Technology Group, has worked with Nintendo in the past and has served as a Switch assembler during pandemic. So, a known Nintendo supplier of LCD screens, and I don't think that they're going to be going into the Wii U territory again because that was a big failure. They're being very tight-lipped and very careful about what they're doing because they don't want a Nintendo Switch situation. They don't want a Virtual Boy situation that are both flops. They spent hundreds of, you know, and sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars in research or at least millions of dollars in research, and it was a flop. It was a commercial flop. So they, of course, don't want that. Nintendo spokesman said the company had nothing to comment on. Of course not. Uh, console expected to double sustained demand for music displays. This is just numbers. Um... Competition in the console space has intensified with growth of Sony Group's PlayStation 5, which is last year's best-selling console in the U.S., and the Xbox Game Pass service, which can also work on Steam Deck, I believe. <clears throat> I believe. I'm not sure. I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong again in the description below, in the comments down below. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, because I just want to know. I want to have a conversation. I want you guys to let me know if I'm right, if I'm wrong. Of course, like and subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Now, let's keep going. The introduction of a better hardware platform with improved graphics, storage, and other capabilities will help reinvigorate Nintendo's appeal and raise the ceiling on the quality of games it can produce. Last year's release of Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was celebrated with technical marvel by the company for squeezing every last drop of performance from an age console, making a hardware upgrade essential to improve game quality. Now, I purchased the digital copy of it, I did the magic that was normally done, and I ran it on an emulator to see how much better it would run than the Switch. I can run it on 1080p60 on an emulator. Uh, yes, the original stuff hard cannot run it beyond 720p60. That is because it's mobile. That is because it is a chip, that Tegra chip is old. This next chip they're saying might be closer to PS4 specs. Definitely not going to be PS5 specs because not even the, the Steam Deck can do PS5 specs.
and the Steam Deck is more expensive, bigger, thicker, has a stronger processor, and it can't even do the Steam Deck. Uh, I mean, it can't even do PS5 type stuff, which is not expected from a, a portable games console, honestly. It should never be expected from a portable games console. But it is going to be a generation behind. But Nintendo was never known for being, well, past the Nintendo 64, and I think GameCube. After that, it, those were like the last ones where they were like innovating on graphics and not on um, experience. Nintendo nowadays does a lot more experience-based things, so it's not so much on the graphics that they are worried about. So this one is going to be at least a generation behind, but no one's going to care because it's going to be better than the Switch, the current Switch. That's one of the reasons why I haven't bought the current Switch, because, I mean, unless I drop it to like $99 or something, yeah, man, I might get the Switch when the new Switch 2 comes out, or whatever it's going to be called. But until then, like, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping my money close and I'm not going to be going for an older hardware when I have a PC that can run uh, the games that I just buy off of the Nintendo eShop. I, I can get the game, do the little porting part that make it work on the PC, and it works better on my PC. So I just do it that way. I'm still giving Nintendo their money, but I'm not giving their money for the console. I'm running it better through emulation. I'm just saying. The emulator is better than the Switch itself. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to keep going that way. I'm just going to keep buying the games and using them on my PC. <laughs> I think that runs better. Thank you so much for watching. Of course, my socials are in the description down below. And like I said, I do want to have a nice little conversation with each and every one of you. I appreciate you all being here. There's going to be some uh, one video on your screen, which I think you would enjoy. I appreciate it if you watch it. Thank you so much. This is the Matt Salvi. Have yourselves a wonderful morning, evening, day, afternoon, whichever one it is in your area. Be happy, be healthy, take care of yourself, show yourself lots of love, and make sure to hydrate. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.